Greetings everyone, this is Mar, and once again, this is my opinion. Boy, what do I say about this film and this episode of First Impressions, the video series where I give my initial thoughts on a wide variety of topics. As you can tell from up there, the movie in question is Steven Universe, the movie. I know, a generic title for the movie, but eh, the shoe fits. Now, like a lot of you, I've been hyped for this film ever since it was announced at San Diego Comic-Con last year. Part And part of that was me wondering, like, okay, with this crystal, where is this plot going to go? Because at that time, the whole diamond storyline hadn't concluded. And now that it had, part of me was also wondering, who is this going to be? If, if we had White Diamond be the big baddie of the show, who could possibly be the next big baddie? Well, now we got that answer in this show, which takes place two years after the events of the season five finale. Steven is older, allowing for Zack to use his normal speaking voice, finally. Uh, characters have aged up. The gems that were healed at the end of Change Your Mind are now beginning to merge into human society pretty well, at least in the town. Steven comes back from visiting the Diamonds, and they want him to stay, which that scene had a big smile on my face just from how the Diamonds have changed in the two years they've met Steven they've known Steven I think I'm trying I was trying to figure out during this whole scene like which one of these am I the most impressed by probably white but that's because of how emotionless she was throughout most of it well everything seems to be going well when suddenly a spaceship lands and who pops out a new gem that we find out is named Spinel and she is very wacky from what I've read on IMDb her design and movements are based on the 30s cartoons and I got that vibe from the start. Even no matter which form it is she's in, you get that vibe. Initially it's dark, then it goes to comedic, then it becomes dark again. And she has a big grudge with everyone, but specifically with Steven. And, as you can kind of guess, it is because of his mother. What are the odds there? Another sin of Rose Quartz coming back to bite Steven in the butt. Well, I'm going with it, just like everyone. Spinel, the machine she's come with, is going to destroy everything organic on Earth within a couple days. And if the goo touches anything organic, it essentially kills it. And she also has this weapon that, not, that neutralizes gems, like the weapon that Jasper had. It's not effective on Steven, but unlike that one it could actually take away his powers. So they have a story reason for why he doesn't have powers, which I thought was nice. I mean, a lot of times video games sequels will try to come up with a weird reason for why the character goes from being uber-powerful for the tutorial to being weak as hell through the rest of the game. It's kind of the story reason of that, but it makes sense. The gems get reset, and part of the storyline involves trying to get them to regain their memories, which I thought was an interesting little plot development, especially for Pearl when she is essentially activated by Greg, so it was a nice little moment there. <laughs> I just love his reaction to this. Is like, this is awkward. As for Spinel, her villain introduction song, Other Friends, was my favorite song from the whole film. Just the way that the actress sang it, the melody, and, and of course watching it with the animation in front of it. Now, going back and listening to it again after the film, the lyrics make a lot more sense. Listening to it the first time, I'm like, oh, they're friends. And listening to it again afterwards, I'm like, oh, she's technically telling them everything, but they don't get it. It's just like listening to It's Over before we find out about Rose Quartz's real identity and then listening to it afterwards. A couple of the lyrics make a lot more sense. Spinel was a gem that was made to be Rose Quartz plaything when she was Pink Diamond. Then when she was given the colony of Earth, she left her in a garden and didn't come back. And she was there for 6,000 years when she found out what Pink did and that Steven's now assuming her role. She basically snapped. As a certain animated clown would say, all oh, all it takes is one bad day. And she goes over the edge and tries to kill everyone. Now, for part of the film, she doesn't have her memories, and she's just wacky and goofy. We only find out this part of it when she does regain her memories again. And 
she tries to kill him again, but the way that they resolve fits, especially with Steven's character development, which, by the way, that phrase is used in the actual film by Peridot, which I thought was a nice little meta wink-wink to the audience. <laughs> but it fits with Peridot to actually use that phrasing because of how uh, blunt and to the point she is. It ruin all my character development. There isn't really a big fight. It's more a talk with some action in it. And there's a lot of songs in the film, so if you're not the biggest fan of the songs in the show, you might want to fast-forward parts of it, but I would say just mute it and put the subtitles on. But there's a lot of songs that you probably don't want to fast-forward through, like Other Friends, definitely, because that's, like I said, one of the best ones in it. Let Us Adore You, both the original and the reprise by The Diamonds, is another good one. And they actually have a uh, involvement in the finale, which I'm not going to spoil for those who haven't watched it. The animation, like always, is beautiful. Uh, the new redesign of Steven with the neck everyone's been talking about. is like, he has a neck now. But it's like, hey, you got to show he's older somehow. Uh, Connie kissing him on the cheek was a little nice touch. So one step further to those two actually officially being shipped. Maybe we'll actually get some uh, development with that in Season 6. The only real thing that we haven't seen that I thought we were going to see is we don't see Jasper interact with Steven. That, that was the one consequence of Pink Diamond's decision to become Rose Quartz in the whole war and battles with Steven and the healing of the corrupted gems that I wanted to see. But I guess they're saving that for Season 6. We didn't even see Jasper in the background. The whole time when we saw scenes with the gems, I was looking for Jasper, like, where is she? Where is she? She's not here. Oh, well. But seeing all the other gems in the background was nice. Uh, the voice acting and the singing was pretty good all around, as it usually is for this show. Musical melodies and harmonies all good as well. Complement the uh, type of musical numbers that they're supposed to be. It's good to hear Zach doing voice work in his normal voice again. Because he's had to do a higher pitched one for Steven as he's gotten older and the show has gone along. Yeah. It was nice to actually finally see Steven and Greg fuse. So I guess you could say in a weird way, Greg finally got his wish of fusing with uh, Rose, just not the way he originally thought. And, it's, and it makes sense. The design is not what I thought it was going to be either, but it's like, whoa, this works. Not really. My only question regarding this film is why this had to be a film in and of itself. They could have just essentially had it as three extended episodes or its own little mini arc. But I'm not going to complain. We got a whole arc essentially in one go. So I'll take it. It'd be nice with how they did this. It'd be interesting to see them re-edit some of the other little mini arcs into film length right like this. Just a little, even if just for a little editing experiment. I'm actually happy in this regard that my little initial thought about uh, Spinel possibly being another diamond was wrong, because that might have just been a bit derivative, and it also would be like, okay, then where has she been this whole time? At least with Spinel being a Spinel, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, not really much else to say from first watch, especially without having any notes. Uh... Just if you are a fan of Steven Universe and you didn't have time to watch the film today, either you're at work, doing other stuff, didn't record it like I did, I'd say definitely get around to watching it. You like it? More likely. If you don't, it's one of those things where I could sort of see why, but at the same time, no. But there there are some things I like watching like that I fall into that weird middle gray area of how I can see yet I can't see. Just like with uh, Superman, the Richard Donner cut. I can see, but at the other times, I can't. 